the greater good. Hey everybody, Greater Good Mining here. Today I'm going to be combining these two KS1s together to make a single KS2. It'll be quieter, it'll be more efficient, and it'll be fun. So stay tuned and watch to see how I'm going to do it. First thing I'm going to do is shut off everything except the two KS1s so you can see how loud it is and how much power it sucks up. So I got to shut off my FPGA rig, I got to shut off my RX 6800 rig, I got to shut off my KS3L that I turned into a KS3M. If you want to see how to do that, I'll leave a um, link in the description so you can uh, switch your KS3L over to KS3M, get an extra Terra hash. I got to shut off my OG KS1, so I got some work to do. I'm going to flick all these off and then I'll show you on my meter box exactly how much power just two KS1s is drawing. So give me a second, I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, I've got all of the rigs off, except for the two KS1s. And it's gonna be pulling, and we're talking about 80 decibels. 80 decibels for two KS1s. And these are overclocked KS1s. So we are pulling 1580 watts at 80 decibels for two KS1s. That is our baseline right now, guys. In order to do this, you're gonna need a KS2 control board from Ice River. If you're looking to buy any Ice River A6, Hop into my Discord and ask T Swift for some pricing. Uh, tell him Greater Good Mining sent you. And thank you to Fruition Designs for the AC Infinity fan and the Fruition Designs kit for the KS1 and KS2. If you're looking to buy one, use my code Greater Good for 15% off. I'll leave the link in the description. If you want to know how much power your rigs are pulling, you can build a meter box just like this one that you see in my videos. There's a discount code for that. Greater, 10% off from either box, and Tangent Wallet. Greater Good is my code for Tangent Wallet. Anyway, there's my shills. <laughs> okay, I've got the control board, a couple screwdrivers, and the two KS1s. We're going to start taking these apart. Let's do it. I'm going to transfer everything out of my second batch KS1 into my most recent batch KS1. This one just arrived yesterday, so um, might as well use the newest one, and I'll clean out the parts from the old one. And I plan to attempt at some point to put my OG KS1 parts in my second batch KS1 because the control board um, on my KS1, the original one, I can't update the firmware on it, so I can't overclock it. So I'm going to try and see if I can um, swap out the control boards to the OG KS1 if that works. Um, then I'm going to take it apart and kind of put it into the shell of the second KS1 um, just so I can overclock it and might as well um, keep the third shell as backup. So I'll have a backup power supply. Um, I'll have backup fans. I'll have backup pretty much a whole backup KS1 in case one of these goes down. I'll have the option to swap parts around. So that's another reason why I wanted to do this. Um, it's nice to have the backup parts. If they would have sold the hash board separately, I probably would have just bought more hash boards, um, but that hasn't happened yet. I'm not sure if that'll happen at all. So I bought this third batch, or sorry, not third batch, but my third KS1, the most recent batch. And I wanted to get it because the prices have dropped so much um, and might as well have a backup. Okay, so I've already taken the screws and the control panel off of one of them. So I'll show you guys which screws need to come off to take this um, control panel off here. You're gonna take off the top screws here, 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 and here. Just the top screws to get that um, control panel off. So in the next step, I'll, I'll have that panel off on the second KS1. Okay, next we need to get this plate out of the way. Just unscrew these two bottom screws here, and we need to get the fans out of the way. So next step, you'll see these two screws removed on both KS1s, and the fans removed on both KS1s. Just remove all the screws that you see here. Okay, so one fan's down. It's just that easy. Just four screws per fan, and the 
the guard will come off with it. I'm gonna keep on going. And the next thing you'll see is all of them off and just the shield. Okay, we've got the fans off and the plates off of both KS1s. Uh, so this one's brand new, nice and clean, right? And this one has only been running a um, few months, like I think three months maybe. Um, so yeah, every once in a while, probably good to clean your equipment up. Um, I have a filtered garage uh, like window too. Like I've got a good filter in the window an intake fan and um, an attic fan. So even with that, it'll still get dirty. I still have to go in and out of the garage. Um, so anyway, just clean your equipment every once in a while, guys. So um, anyway, we're gonna take these screws off here, 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 to remove this on both of the KS1s now. Gotta remove this. And then we should be able to um, unscrew a few things and slide the hash boards out. I'll show you what it looks like with the shields off and then we'll unscrew the, um, the bus bar and um, cables so we can slide these hash boards out of this old KS1. Okay, we got the shields off and it actually looks pretty clean in there. I'll get the hash boards out in a second and we'll look at them close up. But um, so now the next thing we need to do is we need to disconnect the um, power from the uh, bus bar. I'm gonna unclip everything first. Um, I just, I, I know that some of these capacitors probably have a little energy left in them. I just unplugged this thing not that long ago. I don't wanna fry anything. Don't forget the disclaimer. If you do this, you're taking it on uh, at your own risk. Uh, you're gonna void your warranty. So anyway, um, I'm unclipping the um, connector for the bus bar and uh, I'm clipping the cable ribbons off the control board here. Just slide it off like this. Boom, okay, so now I'm gonna unscrew these two screws right here and here, and then we should be able to slide those hash boards out. Okay, we've got the screws off of the bus bar. We've got the ribbon cables unplugged. So we should be able to slide these hash boards out now. So let's see. Yep, there we go, sliding out. So let's take a look at it, see if it's really dirty probably should clean it up anyway actually that looks pretty good even though it looked pretty good I decided to take it out to the garage and blow it out anyway and I'm glad I did um, once you got it apart you might as well do it and I'm glad I did because there was a lot of dust in there and lint that was not easy to see so the next thing we're gonna do we're gonna slide this hash board in right here there's two extra slots boom boom let's do it okay let's slide these in okay we've got all four of the hash boards slid in now instead of connecting everything um, I want to get this old the KS1 control board out and we need to pop this KS2 control board in so we're gonna slide the machine flip it around and I'll show you what we need to do to get the control board out okay now we're looking at the back side of the machine giggity oh. <laughs> we're gonna take these two screws out from this panel and this will pop right off I've already loosened it up as you can see and then we need to unplug the ribbon cables for the hash boards and these are your fans um, we need to unplug these take note of where everything goes because we need to plug it back in on the new KS2 control board so next step you'll see um, I'll have the panel off and I'll have everything unplugged and I'll show you how to slide the control board out okay now that you've got all your cables disconnected it's time to slide out the KS1 control board and we'll slide in the KS2 control board uh, when you go to slide your control board back in it's easy to mess this up um, there's a spot right here where there's like a rail don't just lay it on top of this there's a spot right here where the sides need to slide in you'll see on the control board there's little spots where it's indented right here and that's so when you slide this in the screws can hold this in place um, so just make sure you're sliding the control board back in to the proper spot you'll see um, this plate won't line up if you just lay it down on top of here and there's electronics on the back side of this control board that you don't want probably contacting the metal so it needs to float if you know what I mean like there needs to be space between here so just be careful about that You'll see this little rail, it's hard to see in this video probably, but do not just lay it down on here. 
this panel won't line up and then you'll be touching metal to metal on your control board. So next step, um, we're gonna reattach the plate, just a couple screws on the bottom, and we're gonna plug everything back in just like it was plugged in on the original KS1. And then we'll move to the next step. Okay, next we need to screw the hash boards back down. Well, the, we need to reconnect the hash boards to the bus bar. So take the screws out of the other KS1 and use them in these empty slots, screw those in. Then we need to reconnect our control board cables just like that. And then we'll plug them in from the hash board to the control board. And then the next step after that, we're gonna put the plate back on, put the shroud back on. I'll do, I'll do it one step at a time. So just reconnect your cables, screw your bus bar back to your hash board, uh, and then we'll move on to the next step. I just wanted to point out something before we move on to the next step. Um, you'll see going forward in the video <clears throat> that I, I actually plugged this cable in to this spot and it was incorrect. So this is the correct spot for the cable to go back into. These three cables are fine, um, but this hash board uh, wasn't showing up when I initially plugged it in and I had to do some troubleshooting and I just, it's easy to overlook because um, there's boom, one, two, three, and you skip these three. Do not plug them into this. Your hash boards won't show up. So plug your um, fourth cable, your fourth ribbon cable that's coming off the hash board right here into this port right here, okay? Just wanted to make sure you guys knew that. If you see it in the video going forward, that's incorrect. This picture is correct, okay? Okay, we got the bus bar screwed to the hash boards. We got the uh, hash board cables that connect to the control board hooked up. And now we're gonna put the screws back in for this metal shroud. For those, the next thing you'll see me do is um, put the plate back on. Okay, we got the shroud back on the front here, screwed in. Next, we need to put this little plate back on. Um, it goes on one way. You'll see the screws will line up. If it doesn't, you'll find out real fast and you'll just have to do it over, it's no big deal. But um, we'll put this plate back on and then we're gonna put the fans back on. Okay, we got the protective grate back on. We got the face plate back on. Next, we're putting the fans on. Okay, we screwed the fans in. Eight screws total and the fan shields and now we need to just get the uh, plate cover or the uh, control panel cover back on there's four small screws you should know which ones they are because you're the one <laughs> that took it off uh, just make sure that when you slide this cover back on that you're not pinching any wires or slicing into any wires there's um, little little grooves you can see in the metal um, that you should guide the wires into and then slide carefully the plate uh, cover back on the uh, control panel cover back on so um, next <laughs> next is the moment of truth so after um, this step uh, I'll be back in the garage and I'll be plugging it back in we're gonna fire it back up we're gonna have to set it up um, like from start to finish like it's a brand new uh, ice river um, so I've got um, videos on that if you want to uh, it's my original videos are there are some of my first videos and they're a little raw, uh, but if you need to know how to um, set up uh, Ice Over KS0 or Ice Over KS1, I do have videos on that. I'll leave the links in the description. They're more raw, but um, I didn't have as much of the video editing skills uh, back then. So please excuse the crudeness of the videos and um, hopefully <laughs> the quality of this video will be a little bit better. So anyway, like I said, next up, um, you'll see me back in the garage and we'll be firing this thing up. Okay, you guys, it's the moment of truth. I'm a little nervous about this, not gonna lie. Okay. Wish me luck. I don't 
don't smell any smoke so far. Fans are on. Okay, and we'll give it a minute to ramp up and then uh, I'll check back with you guys in a sec. Okay, you can probably hear it, it's starting to ramp up. Okay, we got the green blinky light, so I'm gonna hit the IP report button and see if it reports into the um, Ice River web GUI. Okay, it's reporting the IP. Let me see if I can get it set up. I'll check back with you guys in a second. Okay, you guys, it's showing up in the web GUI. I am seeing all four hash boards. Sorry, it's a little blurry. And we are getting accepted shares. So I, uh, I need to set this up <clears throat> and uh, have it mined to me instead of Ice River. And then I'm gonna overclock it right now. And then I will show you guys what kind of wattage I'm pulling after it settles in. Um, I'll show you how loud it is. So basically, it's, it's working so far. I'll see if I can overclock it. And we'll see about uh, how much power it's pulling and what kind of noise it's making once I get it all settled in. So I'll be back in just a minute. This is awesome, I'm pretty excited about this. Okay, so I'm getting at the five minute hash rate 2,500 giga hash for my <laughs> Franken KS2. Um, let's see how much wattage. The fans right now are at 29%. And I'm pulling 1,550 watts. Seems to be around 1,550 watts. And the fans are at 29%. So let's see how loud this thing is. Um, I will say it is cooler than usual right now in my garage. Uh, usually it's around 90 degrees. Right now I have everything off so I could do the video. I've had it off for a few minutes. It's cooled down a little bit. So it might need, the fans might need to go up a little higher um, on an average day when I've got everything running. Um, so anyway, for now I'll just show you what I'm getting as far as the decibels go on a KS2 with overclocks with the auto fans going down to 29% at this point with ambient temps at 85 degrees, okay? I'll just be quiet so I can get the decibel reading now. Yeah, about 71 decibels. This was a fun experiment for me. We ended up saving 30 watts by combining two KS1s into a KS2, and we saved about 10 decibels or so. Um, I will say it was a little cooler in my garage when I was shooting this, so maybe those fans weren't um, up quite as high, but maybe there's something to the newest batch of Ice Rivers, the um, KS1, uh, the newest KS1 that I got. Um, it did seem like it ran a little qu uh, quieter and a little cooler. Maybe the fans are a little better. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of different firmware or something, but either way. Um, so if you stay tuned, I'm going to be um, installing a Fruition Designs Kit on this new Franken KS2 that I just made. The Fruition Designs Kit um, will work on a KS1 and a KS2. Don't forget, you can use my discount code GREATERGOOD for 15% off. So um, anyway, I hope this video was helpful to, uh, to you. It was fun for me to make, and I hope it helped you. Um, if you have two KS1s... Um, and you don't mind voiding your warranty, um, this might be a good way for you to save some electricity. And then you'll also have a spare shell of parts just in case things go bad. Um, you'll have a spare PSU, you'll have spare cables, spare control board, um, spare fans, everything. So anyway, um, I liked how efficient this was, um, and I like having the spare parts. Um, I think it was a good move. It might as well save the wattage and have backup. So anyway, um, I hope you found it helpful. If you did, hit the like button. Uh, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to keep it decentralized for the greater good. The greater good.